So, thank you. Um, so, I'm the head of the Swedish National Data Service, which is a trusted digital repository in Sweden. And um, we are working very, very much with the universities, trying to establish structures, uh, assisting the universities to build up this kind of competence in different ways. Uh, we are also providing, um, on national level, the data object identifiers for uh, research data, so uh, a part of making it a success story. Um, I would like to start off with a, p a little bit personal example of data sharing. I've been working very much with the WHO in Geneva, and this is a paper that we were able to do due to data sharing. It's uh, rectal artesmins, which is something you give to children that are about dying from malaria. You can't run big studies. You need to run it in the, in the small scale, otherwise it's impossible. People would die out of control. Um, the issue is that having small studies, you can't come up with like dosage, regimen, and that kind of uh, things. And that's what WHO needed to come up with, telling that you need three tablets, you need uh, every second hour, whatever. Uh, we were able to gather about 20 data sets. And the interesting thing is that this was not at all due to the universities. It was just due to uh, nice, open-minded researchers. There was no infrastructures to gather the data. Uh, but it's, in a way, a um, kind of success story, one out of very many, of course, um, but quite interesting. However, what is driving the development is the, I would say, the bad examples. Um, if you remember the Zika with all the problems, people were not sharing data due to legal restrictions, also due to, like, keeping the data. Uh, it was the same for the Ebola, and uh, also research fraud is one of these good examples, these bad examples of uh, what is happening and why are we developing, in a way. Um, the uh, funders and the uh, publishers are moving, and that's, of course, a good thing. Uh, I've been serving at the Wellcome Trust for six years. Uh, their research data sharing is not an issue, it's really a requirement and it's followed up. You don't get your last money if you don't share your data. It's nothing to discuss, that's the way. Um, it's also moving in a v uh, among very many uh, funders, so like I was in the committee for Zika at the Horizon 2020 and I would say that the University of Umeå, who is the PI of that project, they got this 10 million euros in somewhere in September, not entirely based on a very clever data sharing plan, but partly due to that. So that's also a kind of success uh, story in the Nordic countries. Based on having an infrastructure, based on being prepared of sharing the data, Zika data. Uh, then the, uh, the publishers, uh, I mean, they are moving quite far um, in their plans and they're moving fast. Um, it's a bit of a problem, of course, that they are trying to build packages with publications, data, and they charge quite much of it. Um, anyhow, I think it's in a way a good movement, but we need to in some way handle it in an in a appropriate way. Um, I can just add that my contribution to that area is that I will have a free dinner with um, LCT tomorrow in Venice. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, no, but uh, the, I think it needs to be taken seriously, that we need to discuss with the publishers um, how to work with data sharing. Um, this report, um, I'm just applauding the results. I, I will like, not really discuss the details of the report, but I would like to highlight the local level to some extent. I mean, what Sverker and co-authors have done is a really good thing. Um, it's really highlighting the equalities and also the differences between the Nordic countries, and that's very important to remember that we can learn quite much from each other. Um, something that I would like to highlight before continuing with the local level, I mean, it's really very much on the central level to come up with definitions, policies, uh, cost-efficient solutions, everything that we need to cooperate around. But um, are the universities prepared? And Sverke used, or I don't know if it's Sverke, but I guess it's Sverke used uh, bang for the buck somewhere in the report. <laughs> and uh, I think uh, it's important to remember that the bang for the buck is happening on the local level. That's the universities. It's the researchers. And I would say that what 
we quite often forget is to initiate this kind of um, structures at universities when we discuss yes, the policies. If we need help desks with data, data stewards. It's mentioned in the report, that's very good, but it needs to happen in reality. Uh, the researchers are not aware of how to handle data. We saw it just some minutes ago here. I mean, I'm professor in biostatistics. I have had zero hours of training in data management throughout my career. Uh, we need it, the IT infrastructure. We definitely need the training within the uh, research training. Um, also need to train the old ones, but definitely the PhD students. And I mean, the universities, they also need their policies. There are very few having strict policies on data sharing, data management. Uh, we need a kind of building up national collaborations among the universities. Um, in Sweden, it would be SUHF, so the, uh, this association that is organizing the universities. So we can speak like with one group in uh, not each single university. We need, of course, search portals, we need storage, and storage is a really big issue here. Uh, we heard it some few minutes ago that, I mean, what people are asking for is storage. It's definitely also data management and that kind of stuff, but uh, storage is like one of the core things here. And um, I will not really point in at one infrastructure, but I would like to use for MAX4 in Sweden as an example that we are building up a very nice infrastructure producing huge amount of data. And I mean, that's a really good thing. But MAX4 and several other infrastructures, like uh, we also have SNCC uh, supercomputers in Sweden, there is no real plan for the long-term storage. We need to preserve what comes out, not all the data, but part of the data. And I mean, we are running um, very nice research uh, or upcoming research, and we forget how to plan. We forget that the universities don't have the capacity. Uh, so it's some kind of momentum that we are just waiting for the other one to act, and that really needs to be changed. So I just stop with this one. That's uh, I think it summarizes what I would like to say. That I mean, we we really need to think about all levels in a way at the same time, and the action, the bang for the buck, happens at the local level. So everything that could help universities to work more actively would be very very useful. Thank you. Thank you.